Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a comedy film called 60 Million Dollar Man. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Singh is a spoiled rich youngster living in Hawaii. He has a dozen servants who bring him breakfast in bed, help him take showers, and dress him up every day. His life is unlike anyone else's, as he has a very peculiar way of doing normal things. For instance, he only gargles with fresh cow milk, only takes a bath in his swimming pool with a bunch of women, and only travels by helicopter. Tat is Singh's personal assistant, who manages everything in Singh's life. Because Singh has always gotten everything he wanted, he has developed the hobby of troubling everyone around him. One morning, Tat and Singh board a helicopter to fly to Singh's college. All the students in the college know him as the spoiled brat who plays silly pranks. Still, because of his father's influence, no one dares to go against him. Singh's usual target is the school loner named Su Fu. He breaks the toilet's wall when Siu Fu is inside of it to humiliate him in front of everyone. The poor guy bawls his eyes out and runs away naked and embarrassed. As Sing and Tat laugh at yet another successful prank, they are approached by a new girl named Chung Chung. Initially, she startles Sing because of her ugliness. He is furious that she got admitted to their college because he had especially told the principal to only take in beautiful girls with nicer bodies. Chung Chung reveals that she is the daughter of the science teacher, Professor Chang. Unlike the others, she isn't scared of Singh and his influence. She calls him out for the stupid prank, much to Singh's annoyance. Later, during Professor Chang's class, Singh arrives late, as usual. The other students give him space and move further away, except for Chung Chung, who stays put. The professor overlooks Singh's ignorant behavior and continues teaching. He talks about a new technology that will allow people to be turned into cyborgs. When he dissects a dead body to show them the visual representation of the theory, the students can hardly keep themselves from passing out. During the lunch break, Singh and Tat come to the cafeteria and everyone else walks away, afraid of him. Again, Chung Chung is the only one who sits right beside him and continues eating. Singh threatens to get her fired, but Professor Chang, who is nearby, says that it won't be possible. The professor also calls him the most disgusting student he has ever had. If it weren't for his father being the director of the college, Singh would have been beaten to death by the people he troubles on the daily. To test if his classmates would really do something like that, he blurts out that his father is not the director of the school. When the other students hear this, they do not waste their time before piling on top of Singh and beating him up. Singh is left furious after the incident. He and Tat break into the professor's house at night to teach him a lesson. They set up bear traps in the basement lab, hoping that the professor will fall right into it. But then, as they are about to leave, Tat notices a cut off hand walking on its own. Initially, Singh thinks Tat is joking and asks him to focus. Seconds later, a pair of eyes stares at them, startling the two. They struggle to get a hold of the hand, but it runs away into a corner. On trying to pull it out, Singh comes across a half-human body. The duo thinks they're being haunted by a ghost, and they run away. On his way out, Tat falls into the bear trap and hurts his behind. A while later, they call the police, suspecting that the professor is conducting experiments by dissecting people's body parts. The police search everywhere but cannot find the said pair of eyes or the hand. They think the idea is absurd and accuse Singh of wasting their time. In the end, they evacuate Tad and Singh out of the house. After everyone leaves, the hand and eyes reappear behind the professor, revealing that they are in fact one of his cyborg experiments. The following day, Singh is paranoid that the professor will send the body parts to trouble him again. Hence, he dresses up in football gear, ready to defend himself in case anyone tries to harm him. Singh's father arrives from China to give him a surprise, but is beaten up by his son after being mistaken for an intruder. Following that, someone knocks on their front door. On checking, Singh finds a seductive woman named Bonnie, asking him to help her bathe. It turns out that she is a neighbor who has been watching him for a long time. Singh doesn't miss the chance to take her to his personal swimming pool, where the two clean each other. That night, they go to a club and drink a lot. As they are dancing, Bonnie sees her husband enter the club. She reveals that her husband is a local crime lord named Fumito. The couple tries their best to hide, but the organizer of a show announces them the winner of a dancing competition. When the spotlight falls on the couple, they catch the entire club's attention. 
Fumito fumes in anger upon seeing his wife with someone else. He and his henchmen bring the two to his house to teach them a lesson. On reaching home, Sing passes out drunk. Bonnie tries helping him but is knocked out when Sing suddenly wakes up and hits her. He somehow gets to his car and drives away while the gangsters follow him. On reaching home, Sing is out of breath and terrified. He tries to tell his mother what happened but she cuts him off, claiming that she has something more important to say. She confesses that she slept with Tat 20 years ago. This means that the millionaire businessman Pei is not actually Sing's father, but his assistant is. Pei overhears their conversation and calls his wife a whore. Although it is revealed that an ugly guy like Sing is not his biological son, he is heartbroken by his wife's betrayal. Tat also joins the conversation and asks Sing to stay as his son, now that everyone knows the truth. However, Sing wants $2 million and is willing to continue being Pei's son for money. Tat is distressed because he always loved Sing as family. Sing, on the other hand, kicks him out of the house to receive money from Pei. He did what he had to in the heat of the moment, but the following day, Sing is guilt-ridden. He always had Tat by his side growing up, and after knowing that he is his father, Sing cannot help but to feel sorry. Later that day, he goes to the church for self-reflection and finds Chung Chung. He tells her what he did yesterday and how bad he feels. Chung Chung also begins to realize that he's not as bad as she thought he was. That evening, the gangster Fumito sends his right-hand man Mark to kill Sing. They get into a chase around the house when suddenly the lights go off. When they turn back on, we see that Tat has come to save his son. He puts his life in danger for Sing, but the two are caught in the end. Then, their hands are cuffed together in the bathroom stall, where Mark has planted a bomb. After the gangsters leave, the father and son only have a few seconds before the explosive goes off. Sing takes responsibility for the first time and cuts his arm off so that Tat can escape. In the following explosion, Tat survives, but Sing passes away. What the hell is going on in this movie? The next day, Sing's case is brought to Professor Chang. He reveals that although Sing technically died in the explosion, his lips remained unharmed. Using the technology he has recently been developing, he can reform Sing's body with artificial parts, keeping only his lips intact. Tat speaks to his son's lips and assures him that he will be fine. However, the cost of surgery is $60 million. Pei calls Sing and asks him to get rid of Tat if he wants the money for surgery. But Sing has come to his senses, even though he is only a pair of lips. He renounces his rich father and decides to stay dead, not wanting to abandon Tat again. Tat begs the professor to perform the surgery, using the $6,000 that he has. Chang feels bad for the desperate father and agrees to perform the procedure. But the results won't be as good, as he will have to makeshift the body parts with whatever things he has. Following that, the professor spends days and nights aggressively pinching and pushing the body. For the first few tries, many things go wrong. Sometimes Sing wakes up with a square head, sometimes with a tiny hand, and other times with hands attached to his lower body instead of legs. Then, a few weeks later, everything works out and Sing is turned back to his older self, but with makeshift body parts. Since he is now a cyborg, his body runs on a battery that can die at any time. Sing has to be careful with his life, but he is overjoyed to finally be back alive. While the professor could find an alternative for all of his body parts, finding a male genital was impossible. Hence, currently, Sing has a faucet that helps him pee. Man, that guy's hung like a sink. In the following scene, a funeral is held for Sing, so the gangsters won't look for him again. No one comes to the funeral except for Chung Chung, who is genuinely sad about his death. Sing sees her from afar and is happy that at least someone cares about him. Cut to two years later, Sing currently lives with his father and has been looking for a job. He eats batteries for every meal and has changed his genitals to a shower head instead of a faucet. One day, his college classmate Siu Fu offers him a job as a teacher in a school. Sing is overjoyed that he finally gets to earn money for himself, but little does he know, he's about to face the worst students in the country. On his first day at work, he's instantly attacked with buckets full of water and paintballs. His fellow teacher saves him from the attack and brings him to a safer place. He reveals that 50% of the teachers who have come to teach these students have resigned in only one day. The rest have either turned into handicaps, died, or gone crazy. With a renewed motivation to be the most strict teacher possible, Singh enters the classroom. He shows the students a knife to assert his dominance, but the youngsters trap him in a net and throw their bags at him. The principal of the school doesn't care because the students are the children of powerful and wealthy businessmen. 
By the end of the day, Singh is heavily beaten up and crucified to the school's gate with his shower head hanging out. All of a sudden, Chung Chung appears and recognizes him. She has turned into a beautiful and confident girl, in contrast to how she was before. She tries to help, but Singh smugly claims that he can do it himself. Moments later, she gets into a sports car with her rich boyfriend and drives away, much to Singh's disappointment. That night at home, Singh has lost all hope. The professor comes to meet him and discloses that he has invented a chip that will turn Singh into a superhero. Basically, with the help of the said chip, he will be able to transform into anything. Singh is skeptical, but he trusts the professor with his body. After the chip is implanted, Singh thinks of turning into a rice cooker, and to his surprise, he does. Then he turns into a toothpaste tube and spends the rest of the night like that. Now that he has superhuman powers, Singh goes to impress Chung Chung with them. He finds her at a restaurant having dinner with her boyfriend and his parents. When she excuses herself and goes to the bathroom, Singh follows her. He claims to be a changed person and begs her to be his girlfriend. To showcase his skills, he even transforms into a strange toilet. Not what I would have gone for, but cool. When Chung Chung is still not impressed, he takes over a magic show happening in the restaurant and shows his powers to the audience. By the end of the night, he is flying in the sky with Chung Chung, using an umbrella as a parachute. Unimpressed Chung Chung agrees to date him. The next day, Sing goes to the school confidently. He transforms his hand into a water hose and teaches the students a lesson for messing with him. Eventually, they start to obey him and turn into good students. Everything goes well in Sing's life until one day, the gangster Mark finds out he is still alive and attacks him. They get into a fight, but Sing defeats him easily with his new powers. Mark's boss, Fumito, is not someone who gives up easily. He turns Mark into a cyborg as well, but he budgets the surgery with $60 million and makes him even better than Sing. A few days later, Sing and Chung Chung are getting married. Siu Fu comes to the wedding, but Sing recognizes him as Mark in disguise. The party is interrupted as the two get into a fight. Mark terrorizes everyone and starts firing randomly. Amidst the chaos, he fires a special weapon at Sing that kills him instantly. Everyone is in shock until Singh revives from his burnt dead body, resembling an old woman in a robe. The professor discloses that the chip turns Singh's revenge mode on when he is defeated, which means that he is now more powerful than ever. Singh transforms into a giant steam iron and flattens his opponent. Following that, he turns into a microwave and traps Mark inside. The professor starts the microwave from outside, which melts Mark and finally kills him. In the last scene, we see the professor hitting on Singh because of his appearance as an old woman. Chung Chung playfully asks her father to back off because she is marrying Singh. Subscribe for more videos like this, whatever this was, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.